Join Shannon Perez and Mike Hogaterp in discussing what the CRC has accomplished in the five years since the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released their report. The TRC did ask of us some, some really specific things uh, over the last five years. And already uh, in June of 2015, they uh, uh, provided a, a pretty ambitious timeline for us. And the first uh, request uh, of, of the commission was for churches uh, and communities of faith to uh, respond to uh, call to action 48. And that was affirming the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a framework for reconciliation. So Shannon and I worked closely together uh, with the CRC and a Canada Corporation to uh, develop uh, uh, an affirmation of, of that call to action, which we were able to do in March of 2016 uh, in time for the deadline. And uh, I think that was a remarkable uh, process and experience. Uh, in the course of that work, we recognize that that the path of reconciliation is, is something that we've been on a very long time um, and that uh, it, it goes in fits and starts. Um, our ability to affirm the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is actually linked back to a lot of historical work that began in the 70s and then was also uh, actually very clearly articulated in a church uh, statement uh, called the New Covenant with Aboriginal Peoples in 1987. Uh, the affirmations we made in 1987 were actually echoed pretty dramatically in our affirmation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a framework for reconciliation. Call to Action 49 asks of us as, as a church to repudiate uh, the doctrine of discovery and the concept of terra nullius, uh, both of which uh, assumed that European powers had sovereignty over the lands uh, of North America. Um, in, in 2016, uh, the CRC uh, was able to do that by declaring the doctrine of discovery a heresy. Um, and our ministries were a core part of, of, of that work. Uh, but we as the Center for Public Dialogue uh, have uh, invested a lot of time and energy into uh, work uh, on calls to action seven through 10, and that is uh, reconciliation and equity uh, in indigenous education, uh, particularly on reserve. Um, so we've, uh, again, uh, those, that action has been done in, in explicit dialogue with, with the, the boards of the Christian Reformed Church uh, and, and has actually shaped a great deal of the Center for Public Dialogue's agenda. The Canadian Indigenous Ministry Committee did not jump right in into action or into something. They, upon looking back, there was a real time where we took the time to do some learning. So in our committee, we, we listen to our members of the committee and the knowledge and experience and education that they brought that talked about the impact of residential school, the impact of colonialism. Um, and from that listening, you know, we, we understood and we found out about the value of, you know, a listening posture, not, not listening to have a response, but uh, a listening posture and, you know, how do you, how do you listen to someone who is sharing such a, a profound testimony, right? Creating that foundation to start um, having the conversations with people outside of the community because now, now they had that, that understanding, they had that listening, they had that um, guidelines to, to go for. So there's, when we ask people to do justice work, you know, we ask them too to do their responsibility of learning. So in a sense, that's what the committee did. They, they took that time to um, do their own work and do some reflection and, and learning. So uh, calls to action number 59 um, talks about um, for churches to learn about their role in colonization, um, the history of residential schools, all of that takes time to understand like what is colonization and, um, and how did that impact um, Indigenous people today?
Um, call to action number 60 is um, also asks for churches to respect indigenous spirituality, um, the legacy of religious conflict, understanding the responsibility of churches to mitigate um, that those conflicts. So those are all big themes that you need to take the time to understand the past to be understand the impact of it going forward. So even just learning about the legacy of residential schools, but when you learn about where they came from, there's a bigger history and a bigger um, motivation behind that of, of assimilation. And, 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 you know, it connects back to the doctrine of discovery about superiority and inferiority. And those two calls to actions can unpack so many different layers of learning. Some of that might seem like, well, where is the value in that? Like it, it would seem pretty selfish doing that internal work and how is it showing that make, makes a difference? But I think the more people that take the time to learn could influence the people in their community by um, correcting facts, um, standing up to the stereotypes, um, and just even um, being a little bit more critical about the news that you hear of what is going on and saying, you know what, there's another perspective of that. So it, it is in that sense that like, it's also modeling the, the responsibility of taking the time to, to learn about um, why, why it is we see what we see, right? And so I don't want to discount the, the investment, like the personal individual investment and, and how Kim C was making the means for people to, to do that learning. But I think they're all that much more stronger people in the CRC that can, can continue the work. And, and I, uh, a lot of them are continuing that work outside of the committee in their own way.